Hey guys, it's Linda Winter with another Winter Designs Project. So, maybe you know about my bottle bag. I love this guy. Wine or water or champagne or whatever kind of liqueurs, a hot thermos of cocoa or coffee or whatever. It's just a really nice gift. But this guy here, you know, it's a bottle and you can't put really cute fun stuff. So, I made this. This, I've got a mason jar in it, so it's a perfect size for the mason jar, but it's also great just to stuff full of all kinds of goodies. I am gonna come out with a smaller size that will hold the smaller jars. This is the larger jar, and I think it's a quart, and I think this is a pint, but I can't swear. You guys probably know. If you do canning, this is a perfect way for you to give whatever it is that you're canning. If you do any kind of nuts or any kind of special salsas or anything like that, this is a perfect way to gift this because it's a twofer. And you know, I love twofers. You've got inside of here the salsa and you've got this nice bag and then they can use it again and again and again as well or re-gift it to somebody else too. So I wanna show you not how to make this because my video on this goes into all kinds of detail and it give you lots of great information but I want to show you how this template here, this is the mason jar bottle bag, and this is the regular old bottle bag. These two, they're very similar. So how we do this is going to be pretty much the same thing, but I do want to show you a few little tips and tricks on that. All right, so what we're going to do is think about the interfacings that we want. I like SF101 on one layer. And I like a fusible fleece on the other layer. How do you know which is which? Personally, I like because the inside has to go inside, inside of here. I like to have the fusible fleece inside. It just gives a little bit more stiffness and you're gonna be changing the seam allowance anyway. So why not have the heavier stuff on the inside because it goes inside. So I've fused on and I've fused on. One of these is already cut, as you can see, and the other isn't. I've just done a rough cut, and I wanna show you how to cut with that. On the outside, don't you love this dinosaur fabric, and wouldn't this be really cute? Stuffed with, there's a t-shirt in here, and there's a couple little goodies. There's a, a cracked egg, or an egg that you can crack, and there's a dinosaur supposedly inside. But you can put stuff in the jar, or you can just put stuff inside of the bottle bag. It doesn't have to be in the jar. but. I wanna show you how with this fabric to create and put together. So SF101 on the back side. I fused that on my fabric and rough cut it, and then I used the template to cut these two. These guys here will get out of the way. This one I've already cut, and I want you to show, I wanna show you how to. With the fusible fleece, we're gonna fold this. Now, if you've got an iron, terrific. Give that a good press. If not, I'm gonna use this stiletto. And this is one of Philip's new stilettos. It's a heavy duty stiletto. This guy here, and it's got a nice little um, gloss to it. The gloss is not great for around an iron because you don't wanna to touch this to it. So there are non-gloss ones too. And you guys have been seeing pictures and these are gonna be posted on the website fairly soon. All right, so what do we wanna do? We wanna give a good enough crease. So when I place the template on, it's gonna hold that down and not move so much. And you can see right here, this part here, that's where the fold is going to be. So when I place this on, I'm gonna line this up and I'm looking along here, looking along here. I'm gonna cut, and again, I've got the, those box cuts that are there for me. So we're gonna start first, looking here, not worried as much here, but definitely down here, I'm gonna hold this in place. So we're gonna go ahead and cut. Now, because it has the no slip backing, that's the material on the back, when I turn this, don't have other stuff in the way, of course. But when I turn this, the fabric is gonna stay with it. I'm gonna go ahead and cut here along that edge and then I'm gonna turn a little bit more and I'm looking to make sure that's still lined up and I'm gonna go cut. Now you notice where my fingers are. They're out of the way of the blade because right now I'm inside that cut mark. I'm gonna hold down tight and I'm gonna pull back. And it is tight in there because we wanna get right up to the edge. I'm gonna turn again and I'm gonna go right inside of here, and we're gonna cut, and again, my fingers are out of the way so that if I did go right on top of there, I'm not gonna do any damage. I'm gonna pull that out. And can you see how there's just a little bit of that attached? You can go cut again and pull that out. We're gonna try this side and pull that out and see. If it's still hanging on by a thread or two, I'm gonna leave that, and I'll show you what we'll do with that. So we've gone ahead and cut this. I'm gonna turn here. Now I pay close attention to this to make sure it hasn't moved. 
We're going to square this off at the top. And because I'm left-handed, I'm going to start this way, but you can also go the other way. So we're going to go along here. And I'm using the 45 millimeter, and I'm just taking my time as I go do that curve. But you can use a 28 millimeter rotary cutter if you want to. What I want to do is get right inside that curve. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's enough that we're getting that nice curve. So we're going to open this up. And when I look to see right here, I don't have a whole lot. So right there, I'm going to take little scissors and snip that off. And I can't find my scissors, so I'm going to take my rotary cutter. And we're going to go ahead and just cut there. All right, you want to press out that crease that we've got in here before we join all of these together, just to make sure that that crease isn't there. All right, so in the video, I'm going to be showing you that we're going to sew these two together. When you sew those two together, they're basically going to be like this, and we're going to sew these two together. And when you sew those two together, they're going to be sitting on top of here. You'll see me do that in the video. We're going to go to the next step out in a minute, but I want you to see what we're going to be doing. I love the bottle technique that I'm doing for the handle. It's one of those things, you know, when you have a good idea, it's like, oh my gosh, this is a great idea. So this is sewn and that's sewn. We're going to pin here and we're going to pin here. We're going to ignore everything else. When we pin here and we pin here, we're going to be able to turn right sides out. So let's get this out of the way and let's grab that next step out. All right, so I've pinned, and not only have I pinned, but I've sewn along here. I've sewn here, I've sewn here. You can see these are sewn together, these are sewn together here. And then use a pinking shear. My pinking shear I mentioned in the last video, these pinks are really small. I really like a bigger pink, but mine needs to be sharpened or I need to get a new pair. So you can with scissors snip, snip, snip. These curves are really important that you get in and clean up and get close but not too close because I do not want any of these seams popping out. When you cut this even and this even, give yourself that seam allowance. Don't trim too much because when you're turning, there's a whole lot of pressure here. So what are we gonna do? We've sewn our seams, we've sewn our seams here and we're gonna go inside. Now, when I go inside, you can see here, this guy's going that way. So when I turn this way, as I'm pushing, I want to make sure that as I go, that I'm not pushing in that direction. So I'm going to go this way instead. I hope that makes sense. When I turn this, I don't want to get to where I'm pushing that out. I'm going to take my time and I'm just pushing a little bit. And I'm just using my fingers right now because we've got a very narrow neck. That very narrow neck, we're just going to take our time and just continue to push. You can use scissors, you can use the stiletto. There are lots of different options and you're going to take your time and just turn this right sides out. I want to show you with the stiletto. Let's get that big fat one. And why is it whenever I need something, I can't find it? Oh, it's right there in front of me. Okay, so, all right, you can see when I'm pushing here, do you see how that really does a good job of helping me push this out. This is bulky, and I know it's not as pretty as some of the others that he's done, but that bulk that's there really does help. And I'm just going back and forth, back and forth. We've got the SF-101, we've got the fusible fleece. Both of those are gonna give me a little bit of a grab. We do not wanna push too hard. We don't wanna poke through and get any holes in either our linings or in that fusible um, or the outside fabrics either. All right, so you guys get the idea. We would continue to turn and turn, and when we do that, when you get to a certain point, all of a sudden it's like, oh, it goes. And you can see right here, I've got all of that still. Let me just do a little bit more so you can see. As we get to where, and I like the ones that are unvarnished. The reason why I like the unvarnished, they're not as pretty but the unvarnished, they will allow me to use my iron. I don't need to iron anything here, but when I do need to iron, it really does help to be able to get right inside and put that iron right on top. All right, so you get the idea. We'll continue to go all the way. You can use SF-101 and SF-101 if you don't want to do the fusible fleece. Totally up to you. So you can see right here, we've still got a little bit to go, but look how cute this dog fabric is going to be, and you can, with that one, put in a mason jar of dog treats. 
put a little bow over it, put a little bow wow note to whoever the pet is or the pet owner. And these might be treats that you've made. I know they've got some really cool dog treats that you can make yourself, but that one in here. All right, so what's the next step? Once we have turned right side out, you're gonna press really well. You can top stitch if you want to. I don't, but you can if you want to. We're gonna take this guy here and this guy here, and we're gonna pull these together. And we're basically going to be, this is the outside and this is the lining. We're gonna be taking that outside and you can use pins or clips. And we're now going to sew our sides and the boxed bottoms together. And I'm gonna grab, grab, grab with clips or with pins, hold in place, hold in place, lining up. And because we've used the box bottoms for this, with that template, we know that everything is gonna line up consistently. I'm gonna kind of flatten that uh, strap that's the top because our strap's already done. We don't have to worry about that. If you've watched any of the videos where they show you how to turn that strap, where it joins under and line them up consistently, I'm no good at that stuff. And I don't wanna fool with it either. This area right here, we're gonna leave open about that much. That area, that's where we're gonna turn. It's important that you line up your side seams. You'll see me do that on the video and you'll see me actually sewing on the video too. So I'm not gonna show you that here because I just wanted to show you this new template and let you know it's basically the same process as the regular bottle bag. But now you've got a different size. All right, what are we gonna do? We're gonna stitch my side. We're gonna stitch my side. This is the lining, so we're gonna ignore that for a minute and we're gonna go to the outside and we're gonna stitch here. Once you've stitched there, oh, I've got another step out that I don't know where it is, but let's imagine that this has been stitched and this has been stitched and we're basically gonna be bringing these together. You'll see me do this in the video. And what that's gonna do is create that boxed bottom for you. When you stitch that together, it gives you a beautiful boxed bottom. You don't have to fold out, create that triangle, draw the line, find out, oops, it's not exactly the same. And this box bottom isn't the same as this. Because of these cut marks, they'll be exactly the same. Watch the other video so you can see how that's done. And again, over here, we're gonna stitch here. We're gonna stitch about here. We wanna leave ourselves an inch and a half or two inches you know, down there so we can turn right side out. Do your boxed bottoms, do your boxed bottoms. When you're done with the boxed bottoms, you're gonna be able to turn everything right side out through this opening. Press really well. Remember when I talked about using this guy here, one of these that's unvarnished? You can, when you've got that right sides out, you can literally put your fabric, have this right inside of here, and along those edges, push out and press with the iron right on top of there because there's no varnish, it's not gonna stick. So that's gonna help you get a nice finish. Let me show you what I mean. I want, and this is cold because I just got this out of the fridge. I want this side seam to be nice and open. I want this side seam to be nice and open from the bottom. This is that opening area. You can see that I've got it where I've sewn it close with the sewing machine. Doesn't have to be a sewing machine. You can do by hand. But inside of there, I'm gonna take one of the stilettos, just kind of run it along the edge inside of here. So this is open all the way. Those little techniques of pressing that open, making this truly open and the same as this, that's what gives you a really nice finish for these projects. All right, so this is the bag without a mason jar in it. And you can see the box bottoms here. They're consistent because of that template. Your sides are consistent because of the template. You could, depending on how you finished off that bottom, you could make this reversible. Mine, because I stitched it with the sewing machine, not so much, but you know, hey, who's gonna look at the bottom? So this right here, and actually let's do that. This right here, with whatever to give as a gift, makes a really nice gift. So what else can you put in here? Let's imagine that this is some pretty fabric and it's for a little girl. You can put in a little stuffed animal with a candle, with some bath salts, with whatever kind of play makeup, all those fun kinds of things for her. I also recommend that when you do something like this, you've got homemade salsa that you made, that you make up a little card. I made up a little card, homemade salsa, lovingly made by Philip and Linda. Enjoy before December 20th. 
this is a Gryffindor, so you don't want that. You want to use fabric that will coordinate with this and put this in here. If it's a gift card to the local whatever, the coffee shop or whatever, you know, then that gift card can be there too. Extend this so that it goes around. This can be elastic. This can be a tie so that it ties on. And this would make a really cute hang tag. So if you're doing something like this and you want to do on the outside, you know, choose a cute fabric for the tag itself. This is made with my gift holder template. This guy here, this is my gift card holder. And this gift card holder makes cute little tags like this. You're going sideways so that this part right here is here. And I've got a video on that that'll show you how to do it. Okay, so salsa is one option. I've got popcorn. You know, if you're making popcorn, my microwave uh, bag that shows how to do popcorn, it's really cool. Give the popcorn kernels in here, add a little note in here for directions of what to do, and then add some seasonings inside of here if you wanted to do that. I mentioned the already dinosaur stuff, some candies in here. If you're giving it to somebody at the office, give them some candies that are individual. So if people walk by your desk or her desk or his desk, they can reach in and grab candies that are individual and you don't have to worry about any hand stuff going on. If you're making hot cocoa and you've got a special recipe that you like, I've got some marshmallows and I've got some chocolates in here. You know, this, this is a lot of hot cocoa. You could do coffee, you could do hot cocoa, you can do all those kinds of things. Where is the one? Here's the one with my coffee fabric. So let me flop this over so you can see. I love coffee fabrics. I love anything that is food related because I just think it's a really nice gift to be able to give somebody. But imagine that you have this right here finished and this goes inside of there. So with the coffee cups, with uh, you know all this, it can be hot cocoa instead of coffee. I'm saying coffee, but it doesn't have to be. So something like this is great. I've got over here the one with the dinosaurs. You can stick right inside something like this and a little toy and all kinds of stuff so it doesn't even have to go in the jar. Take the t-shirt out, stick it in there, put this monster on top of it. So, you know, there's all kinds of ways to be able to do it. Again, if you've got where you don't want to put it in a jar but you've got somebody that loves particular hot sauces, these guys go right inside here and you decide how many you want to cram in to that bag, that bottle bag, and add a nice little note with that too. So all the favorite sauces. If it's for a woman or for a girl or for anybody really that wants to pamper themselves, hand soaps, bath salts, um, scrubs, all those kinds of things, all those can go in here. Again, choose the fabrics accordingly, but you get the idea. Bars of soap, candles, those kinds of things work really well too. You wanna fill it with something really special. You can see this jar here, and I've got it flopped out the other way. Things fit in a little bit better with the way I made it because that SF-101 is on the outside and the fusible fleece is on the inside. It kind of does sit better this way, but you can see even this guy will fit in really nice so that you've got a great little gift that you can, can give to somebody. Okay, guys, it's my bottle bag version two. This is the mason jar, but it's just a smaller not smaller in width, but smaller in height. This is actually bigger than this. I don't know if you can see. Can you see how it's bigger? The box bottom cut, I wanted it to fit the mason jar, so this cut right here is a little bit bigger than this. So go watch my video on my bottle bag. I'll have video links for you in the descriptions on this. Go watch my gift card holder. If you're interested in doing a little tag like that, I've got a video on that. And now you've got a video that'll show you a little bit more on this one too. I hope you have a great time figuring out what to put in these and giving these as gifts. I think it's great for the neighbors, great to take to church, great to somebody sick, you wanna do you know, chicken noodle soup, whatever. It, to me, it's just a really nice way to say, hey, I'm thinking about you. Winter Designs, that's winter like opposite of loser. Winter Designs is where you can find all of these. If you have any questions, my phone number and everything is included down below in the link. And you can uh, feel free to give me a call and I will walk you through whatever you need um, help with. Thanks so much for watching.